Hello everyone, this is Dai from Daigo Crochet and Crafts. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to do a corner to corner or C2C baby blanket. Uh, a while back, several months ago, I did a video on how to do um, a corner to corner small square. It was just a small square. Um, but today I wanted to show you how I did the, um, the corners, I mean the, uh, the baby blanket. Um, basically I have my scissors, I have, is this acrylic? Um, I think this is the Red Heart Super Saver. It's a medium four. Of course you can use any yarn. Uh, you can use any, uh, crochet hook. I'm going to be using my, uh, six millimeter, which is a J hook, uh, to do this. Uh, depending on what size yarn you use and what size crochet hook, it'll, uh, determine what your, uh, end result will be for your baby blanket. Let me just move that out of the way. Okay, now as with anything um, where it says where you're going to be using chains, okay, you have to start with a slip knot. And the best way that I can do this is to show you. I know there's other methods to use um, a slip knot or how to do a, a slip knot. And you can watch other videos as well. But basically, um, just put your yarn like this and then just flip it over like this. Okay, see where this, this yarn is on top of this right here. Okay, and then just, fo uh, you can just hold this down right here. And then grab this and fold it over. Okay, see? And then you just pick the center up and then pull. And of course, then you can put your crochet hook in there. <laughs> okay, so that's one way of doing a slip knot. Uh, there's another way that you can do it, um, which, you know, you can just wrap your yarn twice around these two fingers, which would be this way, and then bring it again, but cross it this way, and then hold it down, grab your hook, bring it under the first one, and then grab this, bring it over, and then you just hold it like this so it won't get away from you, and just let it go, and then you just pull. You pull this the bottom the, the tail end okay so that's another method to do your slip knots like I said there's several several ways so you just have to go in there and look at all the tutorials there are on different methods of doing slip knots and then practice uh, to where you can get to or the one you like that works best for you okay now with the corner to corner it always it's always going to start with a chain of six okay so once you have your hook here uh, in the slip knot you just chain six so you start Oops. Oh, come on. That's the thing. Don't pull too tight. Ah, it got away from me. Okay, so let me do this again. Now I'm going to do the slip knot the way I normally do it, which I just put my three fingers right here, hold the yarn down, and then just hold the yarn from here. And then I just put my two fingers like this, spread it, and then just like this, grab it. And that's how I do my slip knot. Okay. Now I'm trying to uh, not look at my hands and look at the camera because I'm using my cell phone <laughs> to do this. Okay, so let's start. Six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so here's your six. And then you always count down um, four which you start right here. Don't don't count this one. That doesn't count. So you count one, two, three, four. So on the fourth chain from the hook, you're going to do uh, a double crochet. Okay. So we're going to be using double crochets. Okay. So you do your double crochet in there. Oops. Yarn over, pull two through, through two, and then yarn over and then pull through two. And this is actually your second double crochet because the first one where we skip, um, where we do the, the, we skip three and then put the double crochet in that fourth chain. This counts as your first double crochet. And then this is your second double crochet. You're going to do two more. So you should have two chains left. So you're going to do another crochet, double crochet in here. Okay. And you're going to do one more double crochet. Okay, so that's be that's going to be a total of four, four double crochets, and this is considered your first block of four double crochets. Oops, 
right here, <laughs> four double crochets, okay? Now that's row one. Row two, you're going to do two blocks. So remember, when you're going to start a block, it's always going to be six chains. So you're going to do one, two, three, four, five, and then six. And again, count four, four chains from your hook. So one, two, three, four. Or because it, you know, they're always going to have six chains, you can just count two up. So it's one, two, see, one, two, and then this is going to be your fourth. One, two, three, four. And then again, we're going to do double crochet in that fourth chain. And then you have two more chains, which is this one and this one. So here you're going to do your next double. And I always hold this right here because I don't like for it to slip out. <laughs> okay, so there's your next double and one more. Now, if you notice, the first block is facing down. See, it's facing down. Okay, so what you want to do is flip it up. So now it's facing up. And then this space right here, this space right here, you're going to slip stitch. So you pull that through there and then slip stitch. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to count up three. So that's one, two, three. And you're going to put that, that counts as your first double. You're going to put three more double crochets. Okay, and then this is your third double crochet. Oops, <coughs> excuse me. I need to pull out some more yarn. <coughs> excuse me, goodness. Okay, and let's see, we have three. We need to do one more. And there's your four. Okay. Now, if you look at it now, this is your first row, which is your first block. Second row has two blocks. The third row is going to have three blocks, and so on. Okay. So now we're going to start a new row. Okay. This is your third row. This is the first block of your third row. And again, we're going to do six chains. So that's one, two, three. Four, five, and six. And again, on the fourth chain from the hook, I always cover these two right here because I know this is four. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologize. My goodness. Wouldn't you know it? I would get a coughing fit right when I start a tutorial. <laughs> Okay, so that was two. I'm going to put another double right here. That makes it your third. You're going to have one more chain, which is this one right here. And this is going to be your four. Okay, and again, remember, see the these right here, they're facing down. I'm going to pull them up. And in this space right here, you're going to slip stitch and this begins the second block of your third row and again you're always going to do um, only on the first block you're going to chain six but on your other blocks you're going to just chain three so that's one two three and you're going to put three more doubles okay that's one, two, three, okay, and on this block right here, this space right here at the end, that's where you're going to do your slip stitch, slip stitch, and this is going to be your third block. Remember, you're going to only chain three. One, two, three. And then you're going to do 
three more doubles in here. One. Two. And three. And that's your third block of the third row. And if you put this down, see, here's your first block with one. Second, I'm sorry, your first row with one block, uh, first row, and then your second row with two blocks, and then your third row with three blocks. Okay, I know it looks a little wonky right now, but it'll straighten it itself out as you go. Okay, now, remember, we're going to start another row, and this is going to have four blocks. Okay, so to start your block, you're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the fourth chain from your hook, you're going to do your, your double crochet, which um, counts as your second, because this right here counts as your first. So you double crochet into that fourth chain. Okay, that's second, <clears throat> excuse me, that's your second double. Now you're going to do your third double crochet. And then your third. And that makes a total of four. And try not to, um, try not to do it too tight. Because then it'll just start curling up on you. Okay. See how it automatically starts to point it points down when you start one row it these point down so remember you're going to flip it so it'll point up and then into this space right here you're going to slip stitch and to start uh, your second block of the third row wait a minute this is the fourth row because <laughs> we already did three now we're going to do four okay so when you start um, a block uh, you, you chain three. So it's one, two, three. Only at the very beginning you're going to uh, to do six. Um, but then after that you're going to do three. I hope that doesn't sound too confusing. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to do three more doubles in here. Okay. This is your third double. Oops, and then your fourth double. Okay, we're going to do our next block again. We're going to go to this space right here. I'm going to slip stitch, chain up three, one, two, three. Three more doubles in this uh, space. One, two, three, and in this last block here, this space right here, again, we're going to slip stitch, chain up three, one, two, three, and then do three more doubles in that space. One, oops, two, let me grab some more yarn. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. And then three, which is your fourth double. Okay. Now what you'll see is that you have four peaks. This is one, two, three, four. So you know that's four. So it's actually you're doing, you have four here and four here. So this is four going this way and then four going this way. Okay. Now we're going to start row five because we have four blocks right here. So we're going to do row five, which is going to have five blocks. Okay. Now being that this is a baby blanket, um, Depending on how many um, how many blocks you make will determine uh, the width 
and the height of your baby blanket. The same method can go, you can make as many blocks as you want to determine what size blanket you want to make, okay? And then once you get the length that you want, then you'll start your decreases. And then I'll show you how to do the decreases after we get to the size that I'm going to make. Um, I think the last baby blanket that I did, it had 20 blocks, okay? So at this point, um, I'm just going to continue doing my rows. And remember, you're going to, whenever you start a new block, you're going to chain up six. So I have three, four, five, six. Oops. And then on the fourth chain from there, you're going to do um, your double crochet. That's one, two, three, four. Oh, come on. Ah. Okay, that's your second double crochet because the, this right here counts as your first. This is your third. And then the last one in this last chain right here. And you flip this up. And again, on this right here, on this space, you're going to slip stitch. Okay. Now, because this is your second block, you're going to chain up three. You're going to chain up three. That's one, two, three. And then three more crochets. Um, three more doubles. I'm sorry. Three. Okay, so that's two. Because you're gonna have a total of four in each block. Four double crochets in each block. And then slip stitch. Get some more yarn. Chain up three. And then three more doubles in there. One, two, three. And you will see that after you've made several rows, it'll come second nature to you as far as how many uh, double crochets you're going to put in each block. And this, these I can do while I'm watching television. I don't even have to look because I know how many I'm doing. <laughs> Every now and again, I do have to look to make sure when I'm chaining up that I'm chaining up correctly the number of stitches that I need. Okay, so now we're going to do, this is three, so now this is the fourth one that I'm going to start here, the fourth block. And again, only three stitches, I mean three, um, uh, three chains, that's one, two, three. Chain up one, two, three. And then you do your three doubles. And as with any tutorial, um, you do repeat what you're doing over and over again. And that's just so you'll, uh, you'll get the rhythm of this. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's a total of four right there. Four. And the last block, you're going to, again, put your hook in this space right here. And you're going to slip stitch in there. Okay, and then this will be chain three. One, two, three. And then three more. One. Two. And three. Okay, so that'll finish up uh, row five. So one, two, three, four, five. And see how it goes? It starts spreading out with every row that you begin. Remember, to begin a row, you're going to chain six, okay? And then when you're doing your, your blocks, your, um, your other block, you're going to do chain threes. Okay, I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, so let's just do one more row. Okay, so remember, we're going to start a row. So this is chain six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-
two, three, four, five, six, and then on the fourth chain from your hook, it's one, two, three, four. You're going to do your second double because this, this cancels your first. So this is your second double crochet. And then don't, don't get um, confused with this right here because that's still considered your second. Okay, so these, these you have two chains left here. So it's, oops, there we go. And your third for a total of four. Okay, so that's the first block of row six. Flip it up. And then remember on the space, you're going to slip stitch in that space and then chain up three because this is your second block from row six. And then you do your three, three more doubles. Okay. So I'm just going to continue. And then once I reach the amount that I need, I uh, will come back. Okay. Okay, welcome back. <laughs> I went ahead and did 23 uh, blocks, and this is what it looks like right now. Uh, I'm, I'm holding my my cell phone because I couldn't get it all while it was in uh, on the on the little tripod. Okay, so this is the 20, 23 going this way, yeah, and then 23 going up this way. Okay, now if you want it perfectly square, then what you would do is you would start doing crease, uh, decreases on both ends. But if you wanted your blanket to be a little bit longer, then you would just decrease on one end of the blanket and continue adding rows at the top until you get to the desired length that you want. And then you would do the decreases on both ends. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with the decreases starting on this end. Okay, and I'm going to put my phone back on the tripod and I'll be right back. One moment, please. Okay, thank you for waiting. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start the decrease on this one end. Okay, so I'm going to just chain up one. Now, you don't have to chain up one. You can just go directly into um, doing a slip stitch on the first chain right here. I mean, on the first stitch. Uh, but I did go ahead and chain up one. And remember, you just do... Oh, come on. There we go. Slip stitch. One. Two. And then on the final right here make sure you go into both loops to that final stitch you do a slip stitch and then into this corner here I'm sorry the space right here we're going to slip stitch again okay and notice I didn't chain up three okay. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't chain up six because we're not do adding another block on this end okay now and again, to start the block, do three uh, chains. That's one, two, three. And remember, we're going to add three double crochets into that space. Okay, that's one. Oops. And then two. Okay, and three. And that's a total of four. Okay, oops, let me grab some more yarn. Um, let me switch my yarn over this way because it's behind the camera. So I'm going to go this way. Okay, come on, Diana. Get with it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. Now, for every block thereafter, Remember, um, you're going to, when you finish one block, you go to the next block over, and on this space right here, you're going to slip stitch in there, and then you're going to chain up three, 
and that counts as your first double. And then you're going to do three more doubles in that same space. Oh, I didn't realize how dry my hands are. And now they're all wrinkly and cray papery. <laughs> okay, it's been kind of dry here, but um, now since yesterday started to feel humid and the temperature dropped, so now it's a bit cooler. But that's Texas for you. The weather can change from one day to the next. Okay, so we've done four total uh, double crochets in that space. Okay, and again, go in here to this space right here of the next block and slip stitch. Chain up three, two, three. And then three more doubles. Okay, one. Two. And. Three. Okay, now what I failed to mention earlier is that even though I'm using this, um, Red Heart uh, Super Saver yarn. I believe that comes in 364 yards uh, per skein. Uh, depending on how big you make your, your blanket, uh, you may use a full skein and then maybe a portion of a second skein. Or you may use both. Um, but usually um, for baby blankets, you really don't need more than two. Okay. Um, and then, of course, um, that that would include if you do a border on it. And on the next one, I'll uh, I'll add a border to this. Okay, okay. So now going back, we're going to again into this space. You do a slip knot, and then chain up three, and then three more crochet uh, double crochets into that same space. That makes it two. Now your third one, which makes it a total of four. Because remember, each block is going to have four. Okay, now remember, on this side here, and, and you'll see on here, if I straighten it out a little bit, you see how it's going to start going up on this right here. It's not going to go out, it's going to go up. Okay, and then when I get over here to this other side, I may go up maybe two or three rows and then um, start the decreases on this end on this end and then also on this end and it'll start to close off and you'll have a rectangle instead of a square but if you want um, a square on it then you can go ahead and um, decrease on both ends and it'll be squared okay but it'll be a, a good size blanket either way okay because remember i did 23 blocks on this one and i'll get my tape measure in just a moment i mean when i'm done uh making this blanket i'll go ahead and get my tape measure and measure the length and the width okay so um again uh i'm going to do one more block for you guys and then i'll leave you on your own uh, to get to the end of this row and then I'll meet you there. Okay, so let me just finish this one. Okay, so remember that's three chains and then three more doubles in here. It's one, oops, sorry. Two and three and that is your four doubles okay so um remember remember when you start a new um block you're going to slip stitch in this uh in this space right here you just slip stitch and then just do chain up three and then your um three more double crochets in here to make sure you have a total of four and you keep doing that all the way to the end and i'll meet you there um when i get there okay and then we'll proceed with the next step see you in a little bit Okay, now I am finally at the other end, and I'm going to finish off this last um, block of this row. I'm just going to slip stitch in there. 
chain up three and three doubles now i thought about um extending the, the length and doing um a few more um a few more rows um and then starting the decrease on both sides but in this case i, I think i'm just going to go ahead and start decreasing both sides just for the sake of time here okay so now we're done with that okay so now we're going to just chain one we're not going to be doing the chain sixes anymore because we're going to be decreasing okay let me just flip that over okay and again we're going to do uh slip stitches into these first three um stitches <laughs> Okay, and the, uh, I should say at the top of the double crochets. That's two and three, and making sure I grab both loops. Okay, that brings you here. So we'll slip stitch there. Okay, now we're going to just chain three because we're not adding any more blocks. We're just closing it now. Okay, and come over, oops, sorry, I almost made a boo-boo there. <laughs> Mistakes do happen. I, I've, I've done um, where I come over here and I start doing the blocks and then it looks kind of weird. And then I think, uh-oh, I forgot. So I had to frog it back just to right here. Okay, and do the three, oops, three doubles. In here, I've got to get me some lotion. I mean, we have some lotion, but it just it doesn't do much for me. I need to get some of the um, the kind that has that aloe vera and vitamin E and all that good stuff that really um, moisturizes and softens. So my my fingers and my hands won't look so crepey. I mean, I am old, of course. It comes with age, but you know, it doesn't look too good when you're doing filming like this. Okay, and I'm just going to continue doing this. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as I stated, this has 23 blocks. So it's going to be um, squared. It's not going to be a rectangle. And like I said, uh, all you need to do, uh, again, is just continue to make blocks uh, on one side and then decreasing on the other side. And that'll extend it and then uh, it'll... It'll lengthen the um, the blanket. The width would stay the same. It's just the length would increase. And then once you get the length that you want, then you start doing your decreases on both sides. Which is uh, what we did right here. See, now it's going to start going up this way on both sides. And don't worry about the gaps here. They will fill in as you go on their own. Okay. Okay. And so we've done this quite a bit, so by now you should already have it down to where uh, you know what's uh, what you how many I'm sorry, where to do your slip stitches and where to do your um, doubles. Okay, without me having to repeat over and over again. But of course, you know if you if if uh, you find yourself to where you need to go back and refresh you can just um rewind <laughs> and go back to the part where you know it i explain each each step okay so right here i'm just going to go a little bit faster and you know it this is such an easy, easy way to do a real quick um, blanket or scarf. Oops, 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 oops. No, no, no. I'm starting to do. See what I mean? <laughs> These things do happen. <clears throat> um, you know, you can make your scarves. You can do pot holders. But I would recommend if you do pot holders, uh, use cotton, 100% uh, cotton. Don't use the acrylic because it will melt and it, and it will burn. Um, okay. Okay. 
Now, in, I did use the Red Heart Super Saver with this but um, to make this baby blanket. But again, you can use um, the softer yarns like the Karen Cakes. I think the Karen Cakes, um, the bigger size ones, you may only need one. One Karen Cake to finish a whole blanket. And then just a tiny bit of maybe a different color to do a different color border to contrast. And there are several, several different uh, patterns for borders on uh, corner to corner or C to C blankets or scarves. You can go back and search those. Just put on their border for C to C and then either blanket or scarf. And there's tons of them out there. And you can use either one. Oh, there we go. Okay, I've got three there. Okay, so I'll do it. And then changing the color is it's very easy um, on these. And then as you know, you get uh, more comfortable doing these, uh, you can use graphs. Uh, if you're able to use graphs uh, to to make like little characters in the center or even letters. Um, I've tried doing that, but you have to do, um, I carry my yarn over and that takes a lot of yarn. Oops, let me get that out the way. You know, it, it does take a lot of yarn, more yarn, uh, when you carry your, you know, the your yarn here when you're changing your colors. It doesn't look bad either when you do that, but it just takes a lot of yarn as opposed to, you know, just doing uh, what it tells you on either on a pattern or on a graph. And then you cut your yarn and then you join the yarn, you cut your yarn and join the yarn uh, to get the pattern that you want. It's kind of like in Mosaic. Uh, Mosaic, um, I'm learning a lot on Mosaic. Uh, Katrina does beautiful jobs on her uh, on her Mosaics. And um, Liz from uh, Liz Crochet and More, she does. She has a pattern or a tutorial on how to do her mosaic. I think she did a couple of Halloween ones. I love that Halloween blanket that she made. Um, I think that was for her son. And then she had a little square um, that she showed you how to do uh, the word boo in the center uh, using mosaic. Now that, um, I would have to practice on that a little bit more before I get comfortable in, in, in doing these. Um, I wouldn't do a tutorial. I would just, you know, maybe do a small video to show what I did. <laughs> okay. Now again, uh, you can use any weight of yarn you just have to uh, choose the recommended size crochet hook or you can go up one like this one i believe um i think yeah on on super heart i'm super hard <laughs> red heart um for these they normally call for maybe a, a 5.5 uh, but i like to use a, a bigger size yarn i mean a bigger size hook so i'm using the six which is a j hook and I don't even remember where I got this. I mean, I have the regular boy, is it boy or boye? <laughs> boy yarns, which is just the aluminum. Um, but these I like because of the handle. Okay. And, um, but you can use whatever hook that you're more comfortable with. Now this yarn, um, when you do these blankets, uh, with the red heart it is washable machine washable and that's what i do like about it and you can even put it in the dryer it won't shrink if it does it'll be very very minimal amount of shrinkage um i have yet to have one that that'll shrink okay and yeah i'm just babbling on here <laughs> while i do this um and this is very relaxing i was watching a movie earlier while i was uh, working on um, getting all my blocks in uh, and so you know I can like I said I can watch a movie and just do this and every now and again look down to make sure that I'm putting it in the right uh, space here and not going down you know two or three or whatever 
but you can pretty much you know tell because when you get right here you can just put your two fingers right there while you're while you're doing your uh your doubles in here and then you know you count as you go or look down to make sure you have your four and then go to the next block and you know you of course you have to slip stitch and then your chains oh come on there we go and sometimes when i'm doing this even looking at it while i'm making it my mind wanders and you know as far as you know planning ahead what i want to do next or uh, if there's anything else that I need to do, you know, for example, you know, what to make for lunch or for dinner, um, which, you know, I already finished getting, what do you call when it's in between? I know when it's between breakfast and lunch, it's brunch. So what would you call it? Um, it kind of tangled on me, so I'm untangling it. What would you call it if it was between lunch and dinner? I've thought about it and I've thought about it and I can't come up with it with a name for that <laughs> so but I just made some um, it's a Mexican dish uh, which is uh, fideo sopa fideo which is a vermicelli uh, kind of like soup and then I made what we call um, picadillo which is ground meat with diced tomato uh, diced potatoes and um, of course you put your seasoning and stuff in it and it tastes pretty good and of course, I made a fresh pot of beans last night. So we have some fresh beans. I can do some refried beans with it. And then I made some um, um, flour tortillas. <laughs> I couldn't think of the name. I wouldn't mind doing, uh, you know, like cooking shows, but my kitchen is, well, actually my mother-in-law's kitchen because we're staying with my mother-in-law. Her kitchen is very, very small and not enough counter space, and so it wouldn't be a convenient thing to do as far as, you know, cooking. And a lot of upgrades need to be done to the kitchen. My father-in-law, God rest his soul, he started uh, up updating, you know, remodeling, um, but he got sick and then passed away before he could finish. So hopefully we'll be able to do that, but right now the funds are just way too low. To be able to do any type of um, upgrading or remodeling anything. My husband does what he can because he's a jack of all trades. He can basically do anything, you know, cro uh, not crochet. <laughs> as far as, you know, mechanic work, electricity, plumbing, which is good to have, you know, because uh, he knows how to do all that. So anytime anything goes wrong, you know. I'll tell him, oh, by the way, you know, if you don't mind, when you get a chance, take a look at this and see if you can get it going again or fix it. And he'll start right away. I said, I didn't mean for you to do it right now. He goes, well, I might as well do it now that I'm right here. <laughs> so once he gets started on something, he doesn't stop until it's, it's done. Unless he gets too late or if he um, needs to go get a tool or whatever. But most for the most part, he's got everything here. Um, so usually his... Um, his friends that know him already, you know, from years and years and years back, they know what he can do. So they'll call him and mainly mechanical work and say, hey, can you come and help me with this? I need this part or that part. I don't know how to do this or I need help with it. So he'll go in and help them. Any type of mechanic. Um, and, and he does help too as far as, you know, carpentry, uh, roofing. He, they do a lot of roofing. I don't like when they do roofing. In the middle of summer because oh gosh it gets way too hot here in texas when we get 100 plus uh weather and i worry for him for being out there especially when they do metal roofs this house here uh, has a metal roof on it and um when it rains it sounds like it's hailing and when it's hailing it sounds like it's you know we're being attacked because <laughs> it just sounds so loud and also sometimes it interferes with um the signals for you know like on my cell phone or if we're on the wi-fi oh okay i'm sorry my daughter had a question so i had to pause it real quick and let's see why do i keep getting this tangled up i guess because um i'm using this huge ball of yarn um <laughs> and so i i took out a a bunch 
so I wouldn't have to be pulling at it. And um, so when you do that, sometimes it tangles up on you. Okay, so I have three, so I need one more to go. You know, I'm, I am looking forward to it, um, the spring weather. Right now, we're kind of like in between where one day we'll be in the 80s and super duper windy. And the next day, we'll go back down to the 60s. Uh, and then at night, it gets into the 40s. Um, yesterday, I think we were, the highest it got was like maybe 69. And today, we're supposed to get to the mid 70s, but not for long because then it'll go back down again tonight. But it's not super, super cold like it normally gets in the winter time. Okay. Oh, I'm almost done. I'm almost here. Okay. <clears throat> it doesn't take very much time to do. Even though I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have 23 blocks. I've been doing this for what now? 16 minutes and I'm almost at the end of that row. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. okay. Let's see, where am I? Okay. Oh, and also, um, I was going to say that um, this right here, this is a mouse pad that Grandma, um, Crafty Grandma Jeannie, um, she had made for me um, but that was before I added um, and crafts meaning daigo crochet and crafts so I want to incorporate it somehow in my logo I started putting and cra uh, and crafts right here or maybe down here or maybe down here I don't know or maybe I just might get a whole new logo I don't know <laughs> I happen to like this though so I might just do and crafts down here I don't know I'm just pondering that still Okay, and also she made me a, a t-shirt with that same logo on it. And um, Hyla from H. Cooper Crafty Bug, she made me these awesome dog tags with my logo on it. Um, I have it here somewhere. I can grab it here in a little bit. I absolutely love it. Oh, actually, I did um, a video on it um, showing that uh, in the dog tags that she made. I absolutely love them. And what I want to do is, which I haven't, is I want to go get me a a chain, a necklace. Uh, is that two? Yeah, that's two. So I can start wearing it. But that one also has Dago Crochet. And which is fine because it'll still work. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if um, maybe she can incorporate and crafts. If I make the logo uh, to incorporate it, then I can just send it to her and then she can maybe make me another dog tag <laughs> or two or three. Now, she, I believe she does take orders for them. If you go to uh, H. Cooper Crafty Bug, um, I'm not sure. I think she has her email in her about page or maybe in, in her videos. Oh, I'll pull out some more yarn. Okay. It's two, three, oopsie, hold on, one, two, three, yeah, one more. Okay, now I'm at the end here, so again, we're just going to slip stitch, and again, it's, it's up to you if you want to chain one or just uh, turn your work. And then start your um, start your um, slip stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and chain one because that's what I started to do. So I need to continue with that. Okay. And come on. Ah, oh, it's going to split on me. There we go. But that's okay. Okay, that's two. And. That's three. And also, uh, Hyla from H. 
Cooper Crafty Bug. She gifted me, which was a total surprise, she gifted me a ring light, which I am using it right now. It's in front of me. <laughs> um, and I'm using my tabletop um, tripod that um, also was gifted to me because I couldn't figure out whether or not the ring light would actually, you know, fold down to her. Because it does have the little attachment for me to put the um, my cell phone in the center. But I have to go back and read the instructions to see if I can have it, you know, fold down to where the light is actually from the top, not straight coming at me. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> my son also gifted me a tabletop ring light set, which I may be able to use that um, for the lighting. So I'll have Hylas facing me and the one that my son gifted me, my son and daughter-in-law, um, have that be facing down so I can get a little better lighting. I have a smaller one that my niece and nephew also gifted me. But that one you have to be really close. I mean, it has to be really close. So that's more like for reading at nighttime. And I like it too because it's, 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 um, uh, it clamps on to the side of the table. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is see how, it, how it's, how it's now squared up. I mean, it's squared up right here and it's going to square up at the top. Let me fold this over so you can see. See, it's, it's squaring up. Once I, once I get to the, to this part over here, then I'll just go ahead and do the, the, the decrease, meaning the, um, where I won't add any more. It's just going to continue to go this way. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Um, but right now, let me get the bottom of it. See how this is going upward? And then when I get over here, it's going to start going this way. Okay. Oopsie. I'm about to lose my camera. There we go. Okay. And now, okay. That was this part right here. And when you do your border, you can hide this tail here. That was from your beginning chain. And then over here, see, it's squaring up. So now we're, now we're going to be going like this to close it up. And then it'll be um, a square. Oh, goodness. We don't want my hair in there. Come on. I guess all of us crocheters go through that too to where we sometimes crochet our hair into our project. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue doing this until I get to the end uh, where I'm about to close it up so you can see the full um, blanket. Um, and then I'll come back and sh and do the uh, measurements to, so I can tell you how big and, you know, lengthwise and, and the height, the width and the height. Uh, and then maybe I can do a border. Uh, I just don't want to make this too long. <laughs> okay, guys, um, thank you for your patience. And I know I have a long way to go um, before I perfect doing these. Um, but we'll get there. Okay, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I am finally at the end here where I'm going to finish off uh, these last blocks. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to slip stitch in here. Okay. As you can see, it you know it's these are the last ones I need to fill in, and then it'll be all done. It's a squared square blanket. Okay, so let's put the three doubles in here. Two and oops three. For a total of four. One, two, three, four. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> okay. Slip stitch into this one. And then three more in here. I don't think I'm going to do a border here on this premiere, but I may go ahead and just do a regular video and then upload it. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Let's just do this here. 
Okay, we're not going to add another block, so we're going to flip this up. Yay, we're almost done. Okay, remember into these three. We're going to slip stitch. One, two. One, two, three. We're about to make our final block to complete this blanket. And it's amazing what you can do with the C2C. Oops, sorry. Okay, now we just connect this here. Slip stitch. Chain one. And then you just cut that. Just leave a little tail so you can weave it in. Secure that. And ta-da! We have finished blanket. Let's see if I can get this. Okay. The starting point. This was the starting point. All the way down. Then up. Look at this, guys. Oops. See? Look how big that is for a baby blanket. And then it'll get a little bit bigger once you do the, uh, the border, depending on how wide you do the border. Okay, so again, um, you can choose any border or no border at all. Or you can just do a single crochet uh, evenly all the way around. You can do maybe two or three rows of single crochets or two or three rows of double crochets even. You can do a front post, back post, double crochets. Um, that would look really, really pretty. You can do the um, maybe a round of single and then maybe a round of picots. Um, and if you don't know what picots are, <laughs> it's P-I-C-O-T, pico uh, stitch. Those look really, really pretty. That leaves uh, these cute little uh, peaks all the way around. Uh, you can um, search for that on YouTube. Uh, maybe at a later time I can do a tu uh, another tutorial on that. Okay, so I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me and uh, allowing me to do this with you guys. I really do appreciate you guys coming in and um, supporting my channel. I uh, hope you like this. <laughs> and if not, that's okay. Um, there's other tutorials out there that are much more professional than mine. <laughs> um, I haven't done very many. This Again, this is my second uh, tutorial, but my first premiere. Uh, so I'm really... Um, excited about that <laughs> hopefully i'll be able to do more of these and get better as i go okay uh okay so for now i'll go ahead and say goodbye thank you again everybody um for being here and for watching me do this and hopefully um you will be able to do yours as well and if you do go ahead and upload a picture or maybe a video uh, and show us you know uh, even if you just do a small little pot holder or maybe you know just a smaller little uh, blanket because you can make a small little square for a little baby doll um, um, bed or cradle. I've done um, those miniature baby dolls with a cradle and um, I kid you not they were about this big <laughs> with the baby inside. I might do another one of those. Um, that was when I first started um, crocheting that I did a few of those for my co-workers uh, before I retired but I never thought to do any videos. That was way before YouTube <laughs> before I got on YouTube um, but hmm, maybe now that I'm talking about it maybe I'll just go ahead and do that uh, and show you guys what those look like okay so I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day evening afternoon wherever you are and uh, we'll see you guys soon okay thank you you guys take care stay safe bye